Hello and welcome back to another Horus Heresy painting tutorial. In this video I'll be showing you how you can paint your Space Marines in the Sons of Horus colours. So as you can see here, the miniature has been primed with a black spray primer, and I've also kept the right arm separate, which is holding the bolter, as you can see there. And this will just make it a lot easier to paint the chest areas. So the first paint that I'm going to be applying over the armor is Cabalite Green. So for this first layer, I'll be painting over the entirety of the armor. Now I don't need to worry too much about being neat here, as we can overpaint anywhere else later on. And I've just mixed a small amount of water in with the mix, just to make the coverage a lot more easily. As you can see there, I'm just going to do a few thin coats and that will give me a really nice and even coverage. So now that we've painted the entire miniature with Cabalite Green, the next stage is to apply some shading. And the first thing we're going to be doing is to provide a uh, layer. Um, and this is going to be a mixture of 30% Cerebite Green, 30% Cabalite Green and also 30% Lamia Medium. So by mixing in the Lamia Medium, I've essentially created a glaze, and this will allow me to uh, create some nice shading. And what I'm going to be doing is focusing on the upper areas, which is where the light is going to be hitting. And I'm just going to be painting this on, and this should be very kind of thin with the Lamia Medium added. And as you can see, I'm just applying it to the top section there. I'm just going to feather it in a little bit, just as it gets down to the bottom, because that's where obviously the darker recesses are. And we're continuing this kind of method across the entirety of the miniature until we've got some nice shading effects going on. So once you finish the layer, you should have something that looks similar to this. Now I wouldn't worry too much if you've got um, the blending isn't quite right, as we'll be doing a wash later on, and that'll tie the two layers nicely together. Now the next step is to perform a highlight along all of the edges of the armor, and for this we'll be using Cerebite Green. So for this step, I'll be focusing on the edges of the armor, so just along the helmet here. I'll just be running my brush gently along the edge there just to create a nice highlight along there like so. And I'll be continuing this across the rest of the edges on the armor. The next step is to wash over the entirety of the armor with Coelia Green Shade. Now this wash will not only provide some shading in the recesses, it will also help to tie in the layers that we've painted in the previous steps as well. I'm just going to be applying it across the entirety of the armor I've just mixed a small amount of water into the mix just to improve the flow slightly. For the next step we'll be continuing with another highlight, just picking out the very top corners. Um, we'll be, for this we'll be using Gauze Blaster Green. So using a small detail brush I'll just be picking out the corners just by applying a small dot into each of them. And this will just simulate the light reflecting off the top surfaces and I'll be painting this along any edges which are at the top of the miniature. Now the next step is to paint all of the joints in between the armor, including the, the trim on the shoulder pads, and we're painting all of these areas with a bad and black. So this step allows us to just clean up any areas that we might have overspilled onto when we were painting the armor. So we're going to run the, the brush along here, being careful not to overspill onto the, the green areas that we've already painted, and just clean up the areas back and bring them back to black. So once we have uh, painted all of the areas black again, the next step is to do some highlights on the black areas. And first of all, we're using Mechanicus Standard Grey for this. So much in the same way as we highlighted the armor, we're going to be uh, running this Adeptus Mechanicus Standard Grey across the edges like so, I'm just creating a nice line just along this black area here. I'm going to be doing this across all the areas that we've painted black in the previous step and also the main stock on the bolter as well. So once the Mechanica standard grey highlight is complete, we'll now be doing a second grey highlight using Dawnstone. So we'll be applying this highlight in much the same way as we did in the previous step, except for we'll be concentrating on the upper edges. So if you can imagine a light source coming from this direction, this, uh, these edges at the top here would be the lightest, so I'm just going to focus on here as well. And I'll be doing the same highlight onto the top edge of the bolter stock as well. So once the grey highlights are complete, we can now focus on the leather areas of the miniature, such as these pouches here, and we'll be base coating those with Steel Legion Drab. Now, as Steel Legion Drab is a base paint, uh, you should get some nice coverage. However, I've still watered down the layer slightly. I'm going to apply two coats, so it gives a really nice and even coverage. So once the base layer is down, we can now work on a highlight. And first, we'll be using a 50-50 mix of Steel Legion Drab, and also a shabti bone. So for this highlight I'll just be running the 
mixture across the edges like so, which will create some nice edge highlights. I'm doing this across all the edges on all the leather areas before moving on to a wash and the subsequent highlight. So with the highlight completed we can now wash over the areas and for this we'll be using Agrax Earthshade. So by washing over the areas with the Agrax Earthshade it'll help to create some nice shading inside the recesses and also blend in the highlight as well. And as you can see I'm applying this quite lightly as so I don't want to obscure the highlight too much, just making sure that it all pulls nicely into the recesses. So the next step for painting the miniature is to paint the eyes, and for this we'll be base coating it with Mephiston Red. So using a detail brush I'm going to very carefully paint the inside of the lens and cover the entire lens area with my Mephiston Red, just, just like so. Being very careful not to overspill onto the areas that we've just painted. So for the next step we'll be painting a small highlight of Troll Slayer Orange into the lenses just along the bottom just to create some reflection. So once again I'm going to be extremely careful and just paint a small line of orange into the lens just at the bottom there, like so. So next we'll be applying a small wash into the lenses of Caraberg Crimson. So by using the Caribou Crimson we can apply some shading as well as blending in the two layers that we painted in the previous steps. The final step for painting the lenses is to apply a small dot of Ceramite White into the corner of the lenses. So by placing a small dot into the corner of the lens like so, we can create a nice effect of reflection in the lens. The next step is to paint all of these steel metal areas on the miniature, and for this we'll be using Lead Belcher. Now this includes the harness on the chest there, uh, also the pipes on the helmet, the vents and the pipes on the back, and also the areas on the bolter as well. So when painting the metal areas, you want to be very, very careful not to overspill onto areas that we've already painted, as we don't want to have to paint over the metallic areas that we've overspilled. As you can see here, I'm just uh, being very careful not to overspill onto any areas that we've already painted and making sure that all of the areas are neatly covered. So for the next step we'll now be washing over the entirety of the metal areas with non-oil. So the important thing for this step is to ensure that we apply the wash over all of the metal areas and we make sure it goes into all the recesses which will help to create some nice shading as you can see here I'm just doing on the harness like so. So once the wash is dry we can now move on to highlighting the silver areas and for this we'll be using Runefang Steel. So using a detail brush I'll just be concentrating this highlight onto the raised edges of all the metal areas such as these vents here and just running the brush lightly along the edges which creates a lighter edge like so. So once all the silver areas are complete we can now move on to painting the brass details and this includes any adornments such as the skull on the, uh, the chest plate there and also any areas such as these, uh, these kind of bulbous sections on the leg there as well. And for these areas we'll be painting these with brass scorpion. So as this is the final step of painting this miniature, the painting the brass areas needs to be done very carefully. So I'm just going to make sure that I'm not overspilling onto the green areas and just carefully paint the skull using a detail brush just to give me a little bit more control over what I'm painting. So once you've based over the, all of the bronze areas, you can now wash them with Agrax Earth Shade. So for this step, I'll just be applying the wash over the brass areas and this will just help to improve the definition on any details such as the skull here and also placing it around any additional areas such as these uh, bumps on the leg there as well. So the final step for painting this miniature is to highlight all of the brass areas with Hash Hot Copper. So for this step we'll just be focusing the Hash Hot Copper onto the raised areas of the bronze areas such as on the skull here, just painting it on the top there as well. And then on areas such as this on the legs we'll just be focusing on the raised bumps just on the tips of them like so. And here we have the completed miniature. Now if you wanted to use bronze armor trim as I, instead of the, the black that I've used, you can follow the exact same steps that I've used for painting the bronze detailing and just apply those to the armor trim along the shoulder pads instead. Now if you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to check out my previous Horus Heresy tutorials which uh, you'll be able to find on my channel and also subscribe to be kept up to date with any latest videos that I do. Additionally, if you would like to support me in making more videos, you can do so by heading over to my Patreon page and pledging your support there. So, until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.